Hey, it's Joe Klein's Automator, and this is another episode of What We Automated This Week with AutoHotKey. Let me uh, switch to my desktop here. There we go, and I'll use Prompt Assistant to launch our script, see what's been modified. Now it's looking across the S drive, 60 files found. All right, let's see what we start with. Automate my task. So I showed this, um, I don't think our fan, no, he did. He demonstrated in the hero call the other day. Uh, it doesn't work, but he's gotten a few more steps along the way, and, and I wanted to change that first one because uh, it needs to be a little clearer on what you're doing and just look a little nicer. But anyway, um, yeah, capture screen. So he's working on the actual script in V2 to, to get the captures uh, in the get range. Oh, okay, He's so he has this thing for saying where we're going to be searching for it. Not sure what that is. The auto suggester. He actually so the the um our auto suggesting script. Let me go to this and I'll launch it and show you. But there we found there was a um, memory leak. So auto suggester. I'll run it. And you can choose different files to be working with. Um, here we have like the default word list and auto hotkey variables. And so I can go into like Notepad and start typing. A underscore, and it's going to show me the built-in auto hotkey variables. Now, of course, we could give it a list. So small. Let's see our pretty links. So these are links. Let me turn that on. I'm going to turn these other ones off. Hit apply. Now, if I say like snip, so here's the different things that have the word snip in them. That's probably the one I had wanted was the window snipping tool. Um, or let's say, uh, what do we have with Excel? So these are things that have Excel in them. So you can see it's a fuzzy match also. It doesn't have to start right at the beginning of it. But you can the great thing is you can build your own list, right? And um, for a lot of us who have things that we want to use, you don't have to go create a hot string. What if you can't remember all the hot strings, but you have a crazy like that um, pretty links. We have eh, probably 250, somewhere around there, downloads. Um, it's bit hard to remember a hot string for every one of those right so this makes it very easy for me to recall them so anyway we had a, um, a minor memory leak that someone had reported and it had to do with the DLL you have to remember when you call a DLL when you use a DLL call you're doing it in that language let's say C sharp well auto hotkey maintains your variables in garbage collection meaning if you delete a variable or object auto hotkey will free up that memory C Sharp doesn't do that, so you have to remember to go back and actually do that. I think that's what Irfan had realized, or I think maybe Isaiah mentioned it to him, and then Irfan tracked it down. So that's why we have to do that script. Chrome Mark Active Tab. So this one, if you're in like, if you're in Chrome, let me start it. I think we made we made it well. We we actually created another one similar to this for Site. If you're in Chrome, it's pretty easy to tell from here. The, the, which tab is active because of that high contrast and color difference and actually I think I changed my settings to have an even more one but let's say we open what can I open here um, we'll go to YouTube and open it in incognito now if we have multiple tabs that color is not nearly as sharp so the script that we mentioned it actually highlights this color now let me show the one we just launched um, and it's for site because site is very similar and Ray a hero member asked if this was possible notice the, how little like I, it's barely noticeable that color difference so let me go back to here mark active tab so if you're a site user um, you can run I, I don't know why I had my own version I could probably delete look it's older so um, what Oh, that's the Chrome Mark Active tab. I'm an idiot. Chrome Mark Active tab. So the Site Mark Active tab. Um, mm. Site Active tab. I'm going to jump down to it. Mm. This will open the folder. Marks. Anyway, so now we see it highlighted. And if I change tabs, that red box is showing you. Now, there is a little bit of a flickering because it has to, it's going back and checking. Uh, but if we create multiple tabs, it'll take a second. There's a little bit of a lag, but yeah, it's at least better than nothing, right? Because that's that is makes it much easier to 
see which one you're on. So, and if we move it, which not many people do, usually when you run this, you're maximized, right? But it will follow it, but sometimes it takes, you notice it lags a little, right? And we could spend a lot of time and probably get that timing shorter, but, um, you know, it's not a tool that a lot of people are going to want, so we didn't spend too much time on it. That's a delicate balancing act when you're working with things, is to um, spend the right amount of time on something this effortless video reducer we actually had so we're really close to releasing this one it greatly reduces video sizes and uh we, risen one had a video and he was trying to shrink it down to 480 i think and for some reason it was erroring out and we still don't know why um i actually found i did i didn't tell him but i was trying to convert another video to um 480 and the 480 maybe it's just an unnormal size because it did the three 320 i forget what size it is but um but it wouldn't do the 480, so it's weird. MP3 Ripper, this one will take any video and remove. It converts it to an MP3 file, which is really cool. And this is like the inverse of that. I think I showed them last week. Quick Raw Edit, this one will edit your files. Um, we, and we actually use this Quick Raw Edit. So the, the file Rizwan was trying to convert was, um, let's say it was a gig. It wasn't that big, but it was, it was over an hour long. And I said, why don't you go rip like a minute of it and save that as a file and then try to convert that. So he was able to do that and replicate the error. So that was nice because then we didn't have this really crazy big file we were trying to work with. But this quick raw edit, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, this FFO overlay. That one, what it'll do is it'll put up words on the screen at different times. And so at some point, we're probably going to be allowing people to buy the MP4 files of our courses and then they would have them locally. They don't have to be on, online. But, you know, of course, I'm worried some, someone will just share them somewhere. And then, you know, there goes our business, right? A big chunk of our business. So what we're doing is sp randomly putting, like, that person's name in the video so we would know who to go after if they shared that we found them online somewhere. So, um, and I think this will be a tool we could actually sell to other people, other um coaches and, and people that have online courses if they want to do such a thing. Uh, test, test, test. Over. These are all, looks like just someone was playing around with them. Config GUI. Flexifinder. Finder. So this one, and there's one let me know that actually this one does work the way it was just I had my own version because I have my own hotkey. Let me show you here. So now I have a hotkey, which I don't remember what it is. Um, control Shift Windows Control Shift S. That's yeah, a, a big one. But now, if we come in here and change, like let's say the font, it restarts with this window. And notice we have this is a good one also. If you, not that if you want this tool necessarily, but just to learn how we did the dark mode, um, because that's not something we you know it's often used a lot. But it, it's a great thing to be able to have as an option, right, for some people. So Control Shift. Let me lose. No, I have to have the windows. Yeah. Because I use Control Shift S and something else, but let's see if it'll. I don't think my. No, oh, it is playing. My my music might start. Control Shift S. Actually, let's go into Notepad again. Now, highlight some text and hit Control Shift S, and it notice it pre-populated that in here, and I can choose where I want to search because usually I'll search the hockey forum. And now I'm, I'm trying to learn V2 instead of V1, so I search the V2 help. But I could also search Stack Overflow, right, um, tagged with AutoHotKey. Or you might use this tool, you know, a whole different way. We're like learning, you're learning SQL and you want to have certain destinations you search for SQL, right? So what this does is it uses Google to search those sites for you. How is there no, oh, the documentation, sure, that makes sense. Yeah, this is the one I was thinking, yes, there we go. So yeah, it's a great little tool to, to learn from or to use because I, I use it many times a day. I just Right now, I usually just click the running script because I don't hit the hotkey because it's, it's on my system tray. If you click it, it pulls it up. And I used to use caps lock and S. Unfortunately, with our this easy one, we don't have a way to put in caps lock and I don't want to have caps lock listed somewhere. Um, and so I haven't learned my muscle memory for... Yeah, maybe it's just control sh control S with Windows. Let's lose the shift. So control S. So control Windows S. That I might be able to remember. Control Windows S. Okay. 
So what I'd probably do is I'll write a little sticky, I'll write it down and I'll tape it to my monitor so I can stare at it when I want it. Um, and that really speeds up that muscle memory because otherwise it's, it takes practice, right? You have to do it. All right, so let's get back to what we've worked on. Not sure, stir check alpha number, not sure what our friend was doing there. I guess he wrote something and put it into his library so he could reuse it later, which is awesome, of course. Um, test, test. We, we updated the Excel function library. We added a couple things to get the header row from where filters were used. We added something to name a range, which we didn't have something in there. And that's just not used that often, but it really should because it makes all your code so much easier to follow. Because instead of giving the location, you give it the name of the range, and everything is so much more intuitive. Um, yeah, so we updated both those. Uh, and I think there was one other one, which I don't remember, but yeah, that Excel function library is great. We're working with a client um, every week. We have uh, an hour or two where we, we are helping him automate his work, and um, his company, I think, is loving it because they're... It went from it was taking one full day, let's say eight hours, down to right now it's 20 seconds. And we're doing more than that person did. So, yeah, a little bit of a game. Of course, we he think he said he put 40 hours so far into it. But, so that means, you know, in five, because it's done once a week. In five weeks, um, it'll have taken care of itself, and then it's, it's basically free after that, right? So they're getting... Um, it, it's hard to calculate savings when it's something that's ongoing and you no longer have much work to do with it, right? Because it, it's just like infinite at that point. So here's the active tab we were talking about earlier. The search room place in Word. Um, I had updated some stuff in there that Irfan did for me for publishing to the LinkedIn newsletter. But then I looked at the LinkedIn newsletter and saw how many clicks it gets and how many opens. And I'm like, you know, it's so few, even though a lot of people see it. Um, I'm like, you know what? I, I just don't think it's worth the effort. And I, one of the best ways you can be more productive is just to stop doing things that aren't working. So I think I'm just going to stop that. Even though that potentially reaches new people, which is one of the reasons why I did it, right? It's because I don't have their email addresses. It can bring in new people. At the same time, you know, it's um, 20 minutes a week, right? And that 20 minutes could be spent doing something else. So I think I'm going to stop doing that. This private clip share. So, um... I was actually talking to GeekTube about it too, of ideas. What we do is we will work with people's computers, um, usually through Zoom, but they don't always have the ability to easily share their clipboard with us. Even with Zoom, it can be problematic. And, and it takes time. And even if you use like either Telegram or the Zoom chat to copy and paste, that takes time. And so what I tasked all of us with was how can we, without having new executables or DLLs or anything, because a lot of our clients don't have admin rights, they don't have the ability to install executables, you know, or even download DLLs, how can we, but they will have auto hotkey because that's basically why they're talking to us, how can we make a tool that would be easy for them to run, and if they hit copy, we can hit paste and vice versa, right? So um, we talked about a lot of different approaches, and then I realized perhaps the simplest best and free mostly free way is to create an ftp account on the automator for each client where we set their credentials and then we use um a ftp file transfer uh from the computers back and forth so irfan's been working on that he has a working version for us right now i don't think that's something we'll well, we could share it. It would what we would need. Yeah, we can share it, and we would need. We'll we'll have a GUI that allows you to select the uh, credentials, right? Because you'll have to go create your own FTP account, and then you'd have your username and login, the domain, the endpoint, basically the username and login, um, and then that's basically it. It, it allows them to. Um, we're going to have one that they run in their computer and one that runs in our computer. We, of course, will see across. We can. We'll have a drop-down list of our different clients so we can switch between them because that was the other really important part was each client, like if we're working with um, Danny, we can't have Cameron be able to see what was the clipboard for Danny, right? So we have to keep those separate. So creating those FTP accounts for each one will, will allow for that. And they're, you know, the passwords will be as strong as we want them. Now, it's not FTPS, which would be a little bit better, but um, we're also not putting stuff in there that's crazy confidential it just needs to be at least somewhat hard to do so 
um, hard for someone to break. So that's what this one is. We do have our ClipShare version run locally, uh, which is what I think these, these might have been. And Irvin's borrowing from that, and that allows me to um, copy something, and we use a Dropbox folder to sync with other people. So I can copy something, and Isaiah can paste, and vice versa, and we can use it to message each other. So uh, because we, we have their computer names and the person's name, we can send a message to each other, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the prop, prompt assistant. Let me show you. Yeah, I'll pull up prompt assistant and show you. Now, this is still the beta. It's not out yet. But if we change this here, now there is an options. So there's all these things in here. Then you go to options. And this is where um, we moved a couple things that are more like one off things that you set and forget. And in here, you can put a path. So if I always want to use, if I want to use notify, because our snippets in Prompt Assistant can be, if you choose to be, they can be auto hockey scripts. And so we created two um, edit fields where you put in the path without quotes. You put in the path to the library that you want included. So if I do any sort of V1 script, I would put up that, and I always want like a certain function, um, let's say UIA included in that, I can put it here. And then every time when I go and create a script inside Prompt Assistant, so let me do that. I'll, I'll come back here and say, let's say add a new one. And text right here, run with HK version. And here's how I decide. And let's say I do V2 64 bit. This little bit of code, all you really have to do is put that code there. That's all this is doing. Um, if I put code here, this will execute V2 stuff. Well, normally I'd have to include the path to that library here also. But that's what that other setting's doing is allowing us to not have to do that. Um, that was a, a hero member, Thomas. He, I think, wanted to include all of the files in your libs, but I'm like, man, I have a lot. <laughs> I don't want them all included, but I thought this was a really good um, approach, and we'll save time, because there's certain libraries where we use all the time. I gave Rizwan a few more things to work on. This is just a script that will restart your PC. It's very basic, but sometimes it's just good to have basics you know, written out in there. Um, the screen magnifier, here's a V1 version of it. Let me show you what that does. It's, it's pretty cool, but I want to see if there's a V2 version so, so we don't have to reinvent it. So wherever I move my mouse, it's enlarging it, right? And we'll probably put a little bit of a GUI in this and have some preferences where you can change that magnification, the size of how big it is, right? Um, so we'll be doing that in V2. This password encoder, I gotta make a video, maybe I'll do that after this, uh, on this. Um, it helps you build... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll do, let me explain the concept and then I'll make a video on it. So, we, with AutoHotKey, often save our passwords directly in the file, because we'll use a hot string or a hotkey, and we'll put our password there and then we can hit a hotkey or a hot string and it will send it, right? Well, it's horrible um, security to put your password in plain text in a file just sitting there, right? So years and years ago, I created this approach where I encode it. I basically replace those characters with some other characters um, that sort of seem random, but they're not. You get to pick and choose. And I put those in a different place, so not in your local file. And I put them... Um, what looks to be, it can be whatever you want. It's actually in any file, but we you can call it like DLL, like this dig dog, dig dug DLL is actually in any file. And if I open a notepad, you'd see the encoded text. So it prevents you from having your passwords just sitting around in plain text, right? And then what we added to it was we make it the ability to really easily go read that file, convert it for you, because you had to still know a lot of stuff in order to make that work. So that's what the script is doing. It's a V2 script. It makes it a lot much easier. Um, we did a by ref example and functions during the hero call and parameter forward um, forwarding, just talking through what that is and how to detect different window states. The you know, minimized, normal, which is like kind of like what this one is right now, and then maximized. How you can programmatically detect those. Um, and then I think Griffin actually used a case statement in there showing how you can take action based on what they are. Um, and that's one of the things, you know, each week in the hero calls, we usually have a list of topics on the Friday call because it's two hours. We have a list of things that we're going to cover. 
Um, and then, of course, anytime people have a question of what they're doing, that takes precedent. So if, if someone has, uh, if Dale had a question about his script on how to do it, usually Dale's more in showing us what he's doing. But um, when people have questions on how to do things with their stuff, we, of course, help them. That takes um, priority over anything that we've outlined. We outline stuff in case no one has something to work on, and then we just go ahead and do it. And Saturdays, they're really level for entry level, very, very entry level, if you, you know, anywhere in there. Um, and so we don't usually structure lessons just because it's it's usually very entry level, uh, but maybe we should because Saturdays lately have been really quiet, so we might have to come up with some intro topics. Uh, but we kind of break them up into the intro and, and intermediate and advanced. Now, we can take advanced questions on Saturday if no one's asking questions, but we try to keep them entry level. So the step away alert looks like um, Irfan and, and I have one, so I can hit a hotkey and it will send a message to Telegram just saying I've stepped away. Um, and we could even have it speak it out loud if we cared to. This toddler keyboard, this is one our fans, it's one I had years ago. Our fans working on converting that, or sorry, Rizwan's working on converting that to V2. Um, simple checklist. This one we just released this week. Uh, I got to make a video on that as well. It is ready for download though. It's, it's very cool of a quick, easy way to have a checklist. Um, this toggle between monitors, I'm telling you, like I can right click on it and throw. You can, of course, assign your hotkey, but it, it throws it to the other monitor I've told it to throw it to. And I can go over there and right-click and throw it. Um, hold, I, I hold down the Alt key is my, my hotkey for that. So I, I hold down the Alt key and hit right-click, and it throws it to the other monitor. So often you have things in your way, and you just want to get them out of the way. And you don't want to minimize, you don't want to maximize. Uh, I just want it moved. So that's what that one does. This Unicode lookup tool. Um, we have a video on V1 and that. Well, I guess I'll make another video explaining how to use it because this is a V2 version. But basically, sometimes people store their auto hotkey code in uh, ASCII text. And that can't handle Unicode um, characters. And so our tool will allow you, it looks up what the Unicode characters are and uses the send command to go um, send them so you don't have to store your file in ASCII. Um, sorry, in, in UTF-8, which would take care of the entire problem, honestly. But a lot of people don't understand encoding and stuff, so we have a simple tool that makes it a little easier to do. Um, and this thumbnail, at some point I'll have to test this. We um, When we publish the newsletter, what the plan is to say, hey, okay, go get the thumbnail to that YouTube video, upload it to our server, overlay it with a red circle to hit play, and then give me that URL so that goes into the um, the image the HTML file I know that sounds like a lot I got to make a video explaining the whole way through right but um, it'll make it a little more likely where people might want to hit play because it'll look like it has a play button on it so anyway that's what we automated this week with auto hotkey if you have any uh, things you'd like to get done and, and want to you know aren't afraid to spend a little bit of money to save some time let me know reach out to me uh, thanks for watching have a good day cheers